my hindu friends if you get an opportunity to go to kailash kedarnath badrinath strenuous push yourself please do it sabrimala do it my christian friends you want to practice this lent properly you want to practice your christmas properly please do it my jewish friends you want to practice sabbath properly please do it that is why our forefathers have beautifully kept spirituality in each of the religion but we are not able to differentiate between spirituality and religion so my sincere prayer to all of you is you will keep pushing yourself keep going outside your comfort zone you will understand money can buy many things money also can't buy very important things you will understand life is not at 35 life is at 75 if you want to be alive young even at 75 you got to have a hobby and my young friends you will understand life is always fair in the end karma will catch up with us eventually we all have to pay a price to karma none of us will escape so let us live our life the right way i did my engineering why did i do my engineering when somebody asked me in 10 what did i want to do i said two options engineering and medical i don't want to do medical i want to do engineering i did engineering somebody asked me why this college i said my friend is joining this college i want to join the join the same college i did my engineering there then after my engineering i took a break here that point of time in 2006 7 taking a break here for a person like me coming from a village a first generation graduate is unheard of i told my father just give me a year i just want to find out what i want to do with my life i am not very clear what i want to do with my life till now life has taken me to an engineering college probably the engineering college i got a job also but i don't want to go to that job i want to take a break here so village my father has studied till 10th standard my mother has studied till 6th standard both of them very great gracefully they gave me that one year to take off they never cared what my village is talking they never cared oh this fellow studied in coimbatore in one of the top engineering colleges he is not going for his job whereas his other friends have gone to a job lot of people have spoken but my parents never cared about it that one year i took off is the most important year in my life i am 40 now if i am looking at all the 40 years of my life that one year is the most important year in my life i worked for a company for 8000 rupees a month my job starts at 6 pm in the evening it ends at 11:30 in the evening because morning till evening my life is all about exploring just to make my ends meet i have joined a company i was sitting in the reception just to make sure i earn something i am not dependent on my father when i had a job with a multinational company in hand i still did not take it lot of my friends call me fools society called me a fool at that point of time but only thing is i wanted to pursue something that was close to my heart i felt my degree is incomplete my education is incomplete i searched for an mba i went to iim lucknow the day one i still remember everybody around me are probably the toppers in their life 10th topper 12th topper engineering topper this topper that topper and very few people have seen second rank in their life i am one of those guys in the batch who is that 70% 75% category guy so two years somehow passed through i am the only goal i had in my life was to learn to seek to assimilate to understand where the world is going again after mba when you are graduating like this i was one among the few guys sitting in the graduating batch 2010 without a job in hand because my civil service interviews was 6 days after my convocation to the day of my convocation to the civil service interview was 6 days i gave my prelims and mains both in my mba time i used to attend a class prepare my civil service simultaneously when i wrote my prelims and mains when i wrote my mains it happened in such a way my mba exams were also happening i convinced my registrar i convinced my dean i will write my mains exam in the afternoon and morning 
and i will write my mba exam after 8 o'clock in the evening as a special permission so i can relate to all the hard work you have gone through the reason i am sitting here and observing all of you very keenly my life was also in a way mirroring your life i can relate to most of the hard work that you have put through the paces you have gone through i never took a single saturday and sunday off every saturday and sunday is civil service preparation for me saturday and sundays i will take a train go to new delhi get into coaching institutes get the books sit in some classes catch a late night train and sunday night come back to lucknow in the morning attend my class at 8:30 in the morning so i could i could really feel that what most of you must be going through sitting here that is why i'm extremely delighted to see all your faces i am very very sure all the hard work you have put it will be worth it probably you will not realize it now you might need a 10 to 20 year window period to look back to see what happened in james b school was magical so ladies and gentlemen my dear brothers and sisters all the graduating students here just be ready because your skills are ready like a like a diamond that needs to be sharpened a diamond has to go through that process a carbon you are looking at hundreds of degree centigrade in earth for millions of earth you give that much pressure to a carbon it becomes a diamond even after it becomes a diamond we are not happy with the diamond still you do polishing still you do polishing multiple polishing then probably a customer buy set they give that kind of value to it and they wear it but for any person to wear the diamond proudly nobody knows the diamond has gone through thousand years of evolution inside earth deep down the earth as a carbon hundreds of degree centigrade under pressure again coming out getting cut then going through multiple polishing and finally being that small dot in as in somebody's ornament so you have gone through that you are skilled ready your mind is sharpened all you have to do is trust the world trust the nature whatever happens to you from today it is all part of a nature many things are predestined and many things you are going to change it by your hard work many things you are going to change by your risk taking ability many things you are going to change by your foresight every time something doesn't go to your plan just take a deep breath and tell yourself you have gone through this which means something best is going to happen to you just keep pushing yourself through things that might not happen to you to your liking over the next 10 and 20 years this is very very important because now the problem with many of our youngsters is mind wise they are not ready education wise they are ready some of the best colleges they have gone through some of the greatest institutions some of the best professors have taught them but mind is not sharp that is why i am seeing suicides happening right inside iits i am seeing the student suicide happening in some of the best educational institutions in our country because there is learning there is knowledge there is textbook everything is available but somehow mind is giving up very fast to them so not only has the james b school trained you with respect to knowledge trained you with respect to subject they also have made sure mind wise you are sharpened mind wise you can take up any pressure mind wise you can withstand anything in your life because that eventually will be more important than a mere textbook degree or a mere a convocation certificate in a piece of paper that is in all of your hand so here secondly feel happy your mind is extremely sharpened so whatever you want to do out in life 100% you will do it without fail also friends you are also living in a time the world is going through a seismic change very few generations in our life can say i saw fire none of us can say i saw fire because fire was seen multiple centuries before by our ancestors some generations have seen a wheel which we didn't see once the wheels came in the circular wheels came in 
again it was a civilizational change some generations have seen tools a hunting tool a pottery making tool again it has changed the course of civilization some generations have seen the invention of automobile a car an internal combustion engine or possibly an airplane so you can roughly mark out the whole humanity civilization into maybe 8 9 10 epoch making civilizational shifts in the last maybe if you take 5000 years you could see about 10 shifts that has changed the course of humanity your generation is going to see possibly the 11th shift in the last 5000 years which 100 years before it happened in the invention of automobile in the invention of airplanes in the invention of internal combustion engine now this generation your lifetime possibly in the next 10 years you will see an epoch making civilizational shift that is the era of artificial intelligence you will be doing multiple things in your life but always remember some relationship if you don't nurture now you will not get it back at 25 30 you got to take care of your parents your parents need you now not when they become 85 and when you become 55 it is very important whatever you do make sure you allocate time for all of this because money can buy many things but money can't buy many important things possibly at 60 we will realize this are more important than money so let us not make the same mistake many of our brothers and sisters from the previous generation made let us chase money build a career make products sell sell it invent companies let us do everything possible take time out to breathe take time out to see the nature take time out to see a beautiful sunrise take time out to sit with your parents and drink a cup of coffee take time out to go to your friend when he or she needs you because giving you will get it back eventually i am very very sure the young graduates here will consider this also in your busy lives from now on third thought i thought i should share with you is always keep a hobby when somebody asked abhinav bindra after the beijing olympics now what you want a gold in beijing olympics the last shot abhinav bindra shot in beijing is 10.8 normally in a, in a rifle shooting you have 7 7 8 9 10 but in olympic shooting there is no 10 there is 10.9 perfect of perfect the middle of bullseye is 10.9 10.8 10.7 10.6 there is 10 so olympic is such an accurate sport the olympians don't go for 10 they go for 10.9 which means the middle of middle so they ded- dedicate all their life to chase that excellence when somebody asked abhinav bindra now 20 years of your life and dream you got a olympic gold medal what do you want to do now he said i'll find out 25 years i wanted to be an olympic champion i've done it now i don't know what i want to be after winning this gold my whole life was trained to get this gold i got this gold you are 35 what will you do after 35 the main problem with our current generation is they are burning out so fast 35 40 45 emi nice apartment emi good car we are earning well enough to do two foreign holidays in a year we are earning well enough to have a certain social standing when you talk to your colleagues at 45 50 years of age you ask them they say there is some emptiness in their heart whatever they want to do they have done it whatever they have to achieve they have achieved it they have done great things unicorn at 37 the youngest billionaire from from bangalore nikhil kamath 37 years 3.8 billion dollars all done dusted all done what will you do at 50 what will you do at 55 the thing we have to learn from all our great people sitting here is we have to age gracefully it is not a great thing to say i am great at 30 no it is important to say are you great at 60 are you great at 
Are you great at 80? Are you great at 90? Are you great at 100? The reason I am asking you this question because your generation, you are going to live more than all the previous generation because you are living in the era of terrific, terrific research. Terrific research happening in synthetic biology. Google has put thousands of crores into synthetic biology. Stanford has done pioneering research. How to extend your life. How to make sure the telomeres on top of your cell. How, get, how, how we can minimize the damage for the telomeres so that your longevity goes up. If there is a problem in your liver, we can fix only that liver. Or we can get into your DNA, fix it and come out. So next 20, 30 years you will see all sorts of things happening where you will live for a longer life. But the question is, do we have to live an empty life? After 45, after 50, should our lives be empty? How we should live with our grandchildren? You and your wife are the lady here with your husband. So both of you should hold your hand each other and live gracefully till 85, till 90. That is life. So I hope and pray in your busy lives from tomorrow morning, traveling all across the world, working, you will find a hobby that will always keep you alive. It could be running, it could be a sport, it could be anything. There should be one thing in your life apart from work. Because work will always bore you. However motivated you are, however great you are, work will eventually bore you. It is this hobby. That is why in the recent Paris Olympics I saw, Many investment bankers have won Olympic gold. It will be very surprising for you. Especially the Olympic sculling and the rowing. Some of the top investment bankers of Newark who run $1 billion funds, who earn $20, $30 million a year, they won a Olympic gold because a sculling or a rowing is their passion. A horse dressage is their passion. Show jumping is their passion. There is a job, there is a life. But they never allowed their passion to die. So I hope and pray all my young friends who are here, by pursuing a hobby very seriously, you will live a multidimensional life. You will live a long life. You will live a happy life. You will live a meaningful life. Because once you hit that 100 crore or 50 crore, or that first house, or the first Benz, or the first Audi, what after that? There is nothing after that, sir. The secret of life is after reaching there, there is nothing after that. So we all chase, chase and chase. Once you get it, it becomes meaningless. So let us get it. It's okay. Let us get it. Comfortness in life is important. But what I am trying to tell you is, even if you get it, there should be something inside you to keep you happy and alive. The fourth one, I thought I will, inf I will tell you is, Life is always fair in the end. My IPS batchmates, I had an interesting set of IPS batchmates, 150 in the batch. Somebody is a bus conductor. Bus conductor. Wrote the civil service exam, cleared it, became an IPS officer. One of my batchmates who is in Orissa now, a Tamil brother, he was a hostel warden. He ran a small roadside hotel. He did everything possible. IPS officer. Lady officer in Delhi, again from Tamil Nadu. Husband was a constable. They were doing parade every Friday. She was coming and watching her a constable husband standing in the parade. She asked her husband, who is that person standing all of you saluting? He said, Bada Sabe, SP, IPS officer. She said, can I become that IPS officer? The husband laughed. To prove her husband wrong, she also became an IPS officer. So we have stories like this in batches after batches. The reason I am telling you this story is, life is not always who starts first. Life is always who ends first. So just imagine, life is very fair to you. Life is never unfair to anybody. You might say, oh, I did so many great things, life is not fair to me. I studied so much, I am unlucky. You see, for 40 years I did not get anything. But this fellow got everything. You might say, if you look at the life as a totality, life will always balance. 
when we end our life life will always give what we want i will again give an example when i was a asp karkala western guards later i became the sp of udupi one of the constable who worked with me ram rod straight constable a person of highest integrity and you all know a constable gets how much salary 25000 he works 16 hours this guy doesn't take a single rupee single penny always straight obedient diligent many people used to laugh at him as asp we live in a small office this this fellow doesn't know how to live his life he could have taken some money here and there some 20000 30000 extra in a month which will add to his salary which will come down to 50000 he could have lived a comfortable life look everybody is taking but god is not punishing them police is not catching them lokayukta is not catching them anti corruption bureau is not catching them very shamelessly this people stopping a guy going in a two wheeler in the middle of a road very shamelessly is collecting 200 rupee but nobody is taking any action and many people in their service by being corrupt has also retired at 60 years without getting caught for every one person to get caught i would say 90% of corrupt people they retire without getting caught every one person they get caught 90% of people happily retire without anybody catching them then we ask ourselves what is justice what is karma somebody is making a mistake no punishment but a government clerk earning 25000 rupees is ramrod harness is suffering living in a 8000 rupee house not able to give good education to his children not able to take his children to a good hotel not able to buy a good dress when that person could be corrupt but still he chose not to be corrupt so do you know what happened that constable son became an ips officer it just happened it just happened it just happened when the father was in the service the son was an ips probation then one day in a meeting i was telling this is karma karma will always balance things in life so youngsters here have to understand life is always fair to all of us you might not get something today doesn't matter sir doesn't matter you will get it when you need to you, you will not get it when you don't want it to happen so all of you my sincere advice to all the young graduates here over 60 years over 70 years you might not make more money your children will be great you might not make more money your father will live long you might not make 1000 crore your family will be happy other sense you might make 1000 crore but 50 years you might go to jail for a corporate governance fraud you might make 500 crore something will happen to your children or to your parents so always remember karma will eventually get back at each one of us nobody can escape this earth without paying the price for karma so you got to be patient that is more important you got to be patient something doesn't happen means some good things are waiting for you something is delayed means some great things are going to happen in the near future with the spirit of positivity life is always fair to everybody it balances always something it will give you something it will take you something it will take something it will give totality life will be fantastic so remember this don't feel bad i didn't get it today don't feel bad i didn't get that promotion don't feel bad the first company you started is not doing well keep trying keep doing your hard work keep preserving yourself things will eventually happen to your friends last but not the least be spiritual all faiths are here i see lot of parents from the islamic faith here 
lot of people from the hindu faith lot of people from the christian faith people from the other faiths also don't confuse spirituality to religion both are different islam says five times you got to pray that is the faith of islam hinduism says you can worship your god any way you fall you say namaste you come on monday you come on saturday you eat non veg and come you eat veg and come everything is okay christianity says you come on sunday you will be like this so every faith has got a percept so i am not saying spirituality is equal to religion i am saying spirituality is understanding who you are being comfortable with who you are living peacefully with who you are being this is very three things understanding who you are being comfortable with who you are being at peace with who you are we can do all kinds of things in tamil there is this famous comedy by one actor called vadivelu he said but very big statement though we laughed at it oru mani nera summa ukkarad evlo kashtam theriyuma he said sitting one hour ideal is how tough because we are not able to live with ourselves we are so distracted by cell phone we want to watch our cell phone even no whatsapp message we still want to open your whatsapp message see and close it no message in instagram nothing is going to fall still open the instagram and see what my friend has eaten for dosa what profile picture they have keep, kept nothing is there still open your email and check whether somebody has sent an email problem is because there are so many distractions in our life spirituality teaches you to live with yourself comfortably yoga please do meditation please do you want to do extended namas please do you want to take a la- good pilgrimage please do you want to hike a mountain on your own please do spirituality you will only realize when you push yourself when you are an ordinary person you will not realize spirituality an ordinary person has to push himself or herself to realize spirituality it has to be a yatra it has to be a surrender it has to be a fasting it has to be a penance only this will kill your ego only when your ego is killed spirituality is born inside you till the ego is there spirituality is not born we can go to temple that is just a drama we can give 500 rupee in the archaka's plate so that he will make you to stand first and give you the first prasadam useless you can go to a temple i can give you all mala mariyada as the vip total nonsense that is not spirituality that is a bogus spirituality where we are telling everybody we are also doing namesake spirituality spirituality is surrender it's penance it's pushing yourself hurting yourself doing a yatra or a journey where you are going to see your extreme limit i hope and pray all of you here you will get that opportunity in your life my islamic friends when you get the opportunity to go to mecca medina please do it very strenuous spirituality go do it you will realize who you are as a person my hindu friends if you get an opportunity to go to kailash kedarnath badrinath strenuous push yourself please do it sabri mala do it my christian friends you want to practice this lent properly you want to practice your christmas properly please do it my jewish friends you want to practice sabbath properly please do it that is why our forefathers have beautifully kept spirituality in each of the religion but we are not able to differentiate between spirituality and religion so my sincere prayer to all of you is you will keep pushing yourself keep going outside your comfort zone you will understand money can buy many things money also can't buy very important things you will understand 
life is not at 35 life is at 75 if you want to be alive young even at 75 you got to have a hobby and my young friends you will understand life is always fair in the end karma will catch up with us eventually we all have to pay a price to karma none of us will escape so let us live our life the right way and my young friends i am very sure you will also understand your real awakening behind begins only when your spirituality opens inside i hope and pray you will not confuse religion and spirituality you will discover your spirituality inside where the true meaning of your being you will realize and then you will live a very happy comfortable life just to end i am not sure how much of my speech made a sense to you i am in my last 2 3 minutes how much did i really connect with you i am only trying to emphasize you are special people you are extraordinary people you are not normal people which means your achievement will be extraordinary i can take a piece of paper i will write it down come give it in each of your hand if it is not happening after 10 years you can take my property so all the b school students who are here because you are special five days work two days studying sacrificing your life which means you will achieve greatness in your chosen field so that is a given we all want you to take risk it is given you know you will achieve great things in life please take risk please take risk i am begging you please take risk start a company take risk travel somewhere take a risk you want to make your hobby as your profession please take risk you want to quit everything start something fresh tomorrow morning please do you are afraid of doing something till now you want to pursue it next week please do why i am saying this because there is no better time than pursuing your passion you are living in this country the world's youngest country which in 25 years is going to be the world's number one economy which you will be a part of and we all of us want you to be really extraordinary in what you choose lot but last but not the least life has tested you in some way don't feel bad starting from tomorrow life is going to test you in other ways in which you will be toppers you will get all you want in life don't worry about that last but not the least i gave you five tips don't forget it coming out of your comfort zone remember the importance of money and also not the importance of money importance of hobby importance of karma and life being spiritual i am very sure small world sir we'll keep meeting each other whenever i happen to see you if i'm able to remember your face i'll say hello if you're able to see me and remember my face you please say hello to me so that let us check on with each other what each of us are doing what i am doing what you are doing let us keep a track of each other for the next 25 years and make this country a great beautiful developed bharat for which all of us should play a major role i take this opportunity to thank the two eminent gentlemen sitting in the stage gems b school the chairman and dean mim nehru ji and the chief academic advisor professor chambi puranik ji and all the parents once again my apologies sir for the trouble it is supposed to be tomorrow you have come all the way for today thank you so much for coming and all the guests who have come from different parts of bangalore and different parts of india are not worried about this inclement weather i bow my respects and my welcome to all of you and all the students who have come here you will do great things in life relax chill have a great fun day today let us start our work tomorrow all the very best take care bye